at her rise. I came out and I told the Greater True Light Baptist Church congregation who I was. My On her last day was named Mary. As the years passed, the name's quite fitting, don't you think? Elamu, Almidi, dreams. Every night, he is insistent with his claim that he is being haunted by the recurrent dream that the Virgin Mary was speaking to him about a buried temple. I continue to write my testimony. Three years later, on a full moon, September 29th, 2004, on Michaelmas, I delivered three rough manuscripts of Amen, the testimony of Michael, with a scanned photo of my hand to my three surviving grandmothers so that they would know who I am and the secret of God that I will reveal. I prepare for war a brain war, a war in the mind. Three months later, on December 28, 2004, unknown to me, my hand is seen for 52 hours by NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. It is a 1,700-year-old blue pulsar star, PSR, B1509-58. Kasim still dreams. The life that all of us live for. He hoped that someday we can enter into the kingdom of heaven. And in that kingdom we can walk on the streets of gold. And we can say, look back and Jesus can look at us and say, Sir, what? well done. This is what Bonnie live for, and as I know Bonnie, Bonnie lived a Christian life. Because I know a mama, and I know a family, and I know what they always preached, even Brother Walter Gallard, who died many years ago. He always believed in Christianity, and Ralph said something today that I want to just reemphasize to these boys who are here today. If you haven't found Jesus, now is the time. Not tomorrow, but today. And as I close, let me say again that Bonnie lives on, and one day if we all live right, and we do those things that are acceptable in God's sight, then we too one day will enter into that kingdom. Thank you for having me. And God bless you, Ms. Bellard, Mike, and the family. Thank you. Say hello. And thank you for everybody for everything you had to say. All the choir, thank you. Thank you. Um, this is weird for me because I've been kind of a recluse for about 12 years now, chasing God. And I um, kind of feel a little separated from y'all in the way that I feel about things. But I love you all, and I want you all to know that. Now, I have a little something I wrote. Um, I, I was talking to my mom before this happened. Sometimes we didn't get along. But I'll tell you this, the past few months, we've always been real close. So I'm going to go ahead and read you what I wrote. One day, when the moon was just right, my grandmother gave birth to a child, a female child, a child that would be the first and only female of seven children. God's light was a beacon of what this child would do in this cycle of life. Mother Israel joined hearts with my father, Michael Oribo, the great water sign on the hill the hungry one, if y'all understand. She gave birth to myself on September 28th on another right moon, the one that's full 
if y'all want to stand. She then graced this planet with a pillar of light, a female child by the name of Toya, also under the great water sign, the dancer. She teaches kids to dance, you know. By God's rhythm, she accomplished this exactly seven years, seven months, seven days, and one minute in distance from her first child. And God has written that she died within seven days of my birth this year. You are faced with the flesh of a woman, graced with God's number of completion. And what he binds will be bound. I know that some of you feel sadness and pain. And I can't say that you're wrong in these expressions of emotion. But I learned from Yeshua that our reactions are quite selfish. I cried yesterday for my mom. I cried last year for my mom when I knew what would happen in the near future. The God our man told me, he showed me the scroll. We're all together right now. We have our church family. We have our Sunday family. And boy, do we look solemn, all in black, like this is a day of sorrow. Oh, so sad. Should we be sad? Or so solemn dressed? My mom was the type of person that didn't care about how you looked or who you were. She could sit with anyone at any level of life, rich or poor, she treated them all the same. No matter what type of apparel you were wearing, or you could afford, or what you could. This lady, Israel, a great example in the sun. I feel a judging eye with some of you here, judging whether my attitude, my apparel, my actions, or the actions of my family are appropriate. But you still sit in this room of wood and glass like we're family. And hey, I don't know if there's supposed to be some sort of pattern or structure to sadness. But I fight my tears. I fight the pain. And if we're all family, this would be the same with you too. Because my mom's the lucky one. The blessed. For we're the ones that the crime should be done. We remain. We sit in which every day, and some of us pray all our lives that we would not die a violent, painful, or prolonged death. My mom did not. The God our man 10 7 has found it fitting that eagle's wings were given to the lady Israel. Ethiopian skin, so strong, yet so trapped and persecuted by the flood from the beast, 1215. I remember being in the fifth grade and the conversation of dying came up. All of us children were talking about death. And we all agreed saying that we wished to die and I was asleep. I saw my mother's face. I kissed my mom's cheek. I saw, I saw her lying there with a smile on her face. A smile like she was looking at our man. The logos called my mom home. The vibration of love hit the right beat for my mom's heart. And I must accept this rhythm of life. And so should you. I've cried to be where she is at this moment, knowing all the truths that we blindly seek in the darkness of life on earth. The neighbor that confronted my mother on her last day was named Mary. The name's quite fitting, don't you think? She 
told me earlier that day that my mom said the light in her room was too bright, so turn it off. The neighbor said that the light was the same light that's always been in her room. No different than she was used to. Yet it was still too bright. I have to ask myself, was it a man-made light? Or the amen? Love. She also asked the neighbor, who were those kids playing outside? And she even laid on the bed facing the window as if to watch him. The neighbor said that there wasn't any kids outside. My dad confirmed this when he said that after he got home from work, that she was asleep facing the window. So he woke her. He said my mom was happy to see him. She was always happy when he got home, when he was home. He moved over so that he could lie at the foot of the bed and watch TV and rest. When I heard this, I thought of the life of my brother and yours, Yeshua, the great wisdom wanderer. When the little children were brought to him to place hands on them and pray for them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Yeshua said, let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. He placed his hands on them and he left. My family and I are one. We're all we had and we stuck together. We argued, we argued till the sun came up then we all get no more. We laughed at each other. We defended each other. We backed up each other. And would let each other fall if the time was due. But one is all there is. And one is all there will be. That is the law. I know universal love and planetary love. My parents had 32 years of earthly love, and my sister and I were witnesses and the divine products of it. Now you are witness with the flesh of Mother Israel and the return to this planet of love in a fashion that only the Amen could bring. My mom said she had a dream that I was rising on a cloud at the foot of her bed. She did not realize that she would rise first. With her ascent, we would see a time of trouble, the trouble only her child could bring, and then a time of everlasting peace. If those of you here can calculate creation, and look upon each other and see that the God our man has gathered you few to see the lady, the Scorpio, the first prophecy in the Bible, and the last of the dead, the mother of the sign 127, Bonnie Mae Billard, Bonnie Arebo, and to those of you at the School of Time, Cooney, <laughs> shine from within the sun, the God our men, and look down at you and say, don't cry, don't weep, for you will soon be.